outside of beautiful Bank OZK Arena in Hot Springs, Arkansas. We're preparing for the 3A girls state title game between Lamar and Bergman. But first, let's tell you how some things unfolded last night. Raucous crowds here for the two contests we had in Class 2A. Michael Westbrook along with Wes Moore. Wes, we saw two fun ones last night. The first one, not exactly a close game. It was a runaway victory for Melbourne, 63-30 to over Bigelow. And Melbourne wins their fourth consecutive state championship. Tell you what, Melbourne is so impressive. And Kinley McCarn, you have to start with her number 42. She was the state tournament MVP. The senior is headed off to play college basketball and she ends her career on a high note, just dominating the game last night. She could do it from outside, like right there. She could take it inside. A little bit of everything from McCarn last night. She's going to UT Martin, and she told us in the post-game interview that it was all about defense for her team. And her younger sister, Caitlin, she really played good defense as that set up a lot of McCarn's shots. They were able to hold Evans in check in that game, 63-30, the final Melbourne over Bigelow. Then it was Lavaca and Colby Glidewell, the MVP. They beat Magnet Cove 50-34. This was a strange game. It was close for the first three quarters. They were tied up at 23 early, early what, in the third quarter. Then all of a sudden, Lavaca just exploded and went on a run. And this team, not the biggest team, not the uh, tallest team, not the most talented team, but you know what? They get after you defensively. When we come back, it's the 3A state championship games. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. This month in Passport on the PBS video app. Fasten your seatbelt. I'm descended from mystery. I didn't know what we were. We're going to find out. Vintage Hot Springs. For oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, man. Dutch Schultz starts making an unbelievable amount of money. And that money is said to be buried in upstate New York. These and other shows from Arkansas PBS are available with Passport on the PBS video app. You know, I think sports are really big to a lot of people. And because it's an important part of our fabric in our community, and the one good thing about what I've seen is it's high quality production. You know, you think of the small communities all over Arkansas, it's a big deal that they can turn on the TV or DVR or whatever and know they're gonna get a quality product. And so I think it just expands the, uh, the focus of what PBS is doing. You know, Arkansas PBS is doing a great job and, and I think it's part of education. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car to your first home, to your first child and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring for everything that matters most to you and your family there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love your local farm bureau insurance agent farm bureau insurance real service real people Welcome inside Bank OZK Arena for the Class 3A Girls State Championship game. Michael Westbrook along with Wes Moore. We're ready to get this one underway. The Lamar Lady Warriors 31-2 and the Bergman Lady Panthers 44-0. It's tip-off time in Bank OZK Arena in Hot Springs. Lamar coming out playing a little man-to-man -man defense, trying to get after Bergman, being aggressive on this first possession. They'll allow that long three. Bergman in the white uniforms, and that one on the front of the rim, and in for Carson Edwards. Here's the starting five for Bergman, Kara Ponder, Abigail Hodges, Maddie Holt. Heard from Edwards, and Kessa Willis. Right back the other way for Lamar. Here's their starters. Morgan Cochran, Bailey Cowell, Shay Taylor, Carly Williams, and Corey Sanders. And both teams starting with a basket on their opening possession. How about Carly Williams taking it inside, right straight to the body of the post player. And we see the same thing from Bergman as they go straight to the body. Kessel Willis with us. We'll take, we're seeing some shots here early in this, this girls game. Three shots, three makes. 
Tracking down the loose basketball for Lamar is Corey Sanders. She's our player to watch for Bergman. Sanders coming into the state championship game averaging 14 points, and she's a freshman. A freshman. I think we should repeat that. Maybe a third time. She's a freshman. She's leading Lamar with 14 points, four rebounds, 2.8 steals. She's a 79% free throw shooter. Coach says she's the commander on the floor as a freshman. Morgan Cochran knocks down the game's first free throw. The foul went against Kessa Willis, her first. 71% free throw shooter. Makes both. Haven't had a miss yet. Bergman, a high dribble there from Willis. As the offense gets, goes in motion. Hodges swings it into the hands of Ponder. Up top, Edwards hit a three a moment ago. Now they pound it inside to Holt. Lost it. Picked up by Corey Sanders. A good stop by Lamar. Carly Williams did a great job just putting her hands straight up in the air. Too strong on the shot from Cochran. Good pass from Sanders. She was open. Just could not get that one to go. A little adrenaline there on that first long shot. little different shooting inside this arena too. It takes a few minutes to get used to it. They get a little shoot around, but. Fans wanted to travel. Maddie Holt with the step through. She gets her first two, and she's our player to watch for Bergman. 18 points a game for the junior. 60% from the field. It's a good shooter right there. That's incredible. Cochran drives into the paint, pulls up, uses the glass, a rebound by Bergman. Good idea from Cochran, just couldn't get it to fall. Hodges around her defender, hit on the arm. Abigail Hodges, the senior, will go to the line for two. Sanders is charged with her first. Kind of reached in there with the right arm, trying to slap at the ball, but got her on the body. A sender to the free throw line. Hodges first one's off. She averages six points a game. James Halitska, the head coach for the undefeated Bergman Lady Panthers. Seven to four, Bergman in the early action. Make it eight four. Corey Sanders, five foot two. Shortest player on the floor. She runs the offense, they work it inside. Bergman gets the basket. Credit to Carly Williams, her second make, she has four. Great set play. You can tell they've run that so many times. A little push right there. Trying to get physical with Hodges, or with Edwards. Almost pushed her out of bounds. Bailey Cowell called for her first foul. It was on the floor, Lady Panthers will inbound. Edwards has a big size advantage, but the surprise has been her outside shooting. Here she is, misses that one. And she's been able to get to the basket. She's able to get the ball, put the ball on the, on the floor and get to the rim. She averages eight points a game. Drive inside, and that shot won't go for Sanders. Offensive board may have been partially blocked. A third look. Lady Panthers come up with the stop. And they are moving quickly back to the other end. Off the glass, it would not go for Tessa Willis. What? Sanders, what? how about that? She was running with it, looked up, did not have numbers, so the freshman pulls up, sets the offense. Cochran into the corner, tries to cross over a defender into the paint. Now another look inside. And how about that? Carly Williams now has six points, going up against Edwards, very patient, what a play. Coach told us before the game, she doesn't have the most size, but she knows how to play big. Uh, I think that's exactly what we just saw. And we're seeing Bergman miss some shots close at the rim while Lamar's hitting them, but we're all tied at eight, inside four to play in the first. Sanders falls down, no whistle, and now a tie ball. Tries to get a little trip there, a little body, a foul call, but 
We'll have a jump ball. Have our first time out of the game. Wait, what a great start to this one. 8-8 eight, eight so far. Some hot shooting. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first, by empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charities, education, and exceptional service. Because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind. Centennial Bank, member FDIC. There's well over 2,000 Arkansas rice farms. 96% of them are family owned and operated. It's all about building community. The results we've been seeing have been very promising. I grew up watching the farm, knowing every detail about it. If you take care of the soil, the soil will take care of you. It helps us to give back to the land and make sure that it's going to be there for future generations. Every community has a story to tell, and if somebody will tell it, it'll be interesting. Big thank you to Schlotsky's of Hot Springs. They're at 3251 Central Avenue, and they provided food for our crew, and I know our crew is very thankful for Schlotsky's. Three fun days you got to eat. Eight to eight as we resume play in the first. 3.40 to go. Lamar controlling. It's Cochran. Works it back up to the freshman point guard, Corey Sanders. She's looking to drive. Crosses over a defender. Passed up a shot in the corner, now Williams, already with six points in the first. Williams deep on the baseline and back out top. Very patient, Lamar. Step back three is just short. It ricochets right back to Sanders. Now a long three on its way. That one off the heel from Cowell. Rebound inside by Edwards. She's headed towards a big day, three points and three boards. Looking for Edwards inside. And tied up. And it's Carly Williams making a play on defense. Williams comes from that backside for the double team. Edwards turns right into her. Ball right there, so she grabs it, takes it from her, or at least ties it up. Session arrow with Bergman, couple of subs. Edwards goes out of the game. Madeline Moon is in. And Lamar will send Bailey Cowell to the bench for her first rest. Madison Davidson into the game. Davidson also a freshman. Moon gets in and finds the ball in her hands on that great inbounds play, but she wasn't able to finish. Sanders, she's open, she'll take it. Hard rebound by Kara Ponder. Bergman back in possession, we're still tied at eight. Hard drive in by Maddie Holt, off the glass and in. She is the team's leading scorer because of plays like that. Very aggressive, cut to the basket. Found an open spot in the lane, goes in, puts it up. 10-8, great game, only one turnover so far in this game. Shea Taylor with it, Holt guarding. Now to Williams. Williams backs down her defender, kicks it back out. Sanders trying to make her move, cut off. Good defense, again a patient offense. Cochran all the way around. Loose ball, picked back up by Lamar. Three up top, can't get the three to go right now. They're 0 for 5 and a turnover. A bad pass into the seats. Maybe rushing the three just a hair. You know, just, they're open and they can just take their time a little bit. It's going to fall. You can tell they got good shots. They'll get that first one to go and loosen up a little bit. No turnovers for Lamar. Bergman has two. Williams into the paint, needs help, able to find her teammate. That's Kyle. She hits the mid-range jumper. Bailey Kyle with her first two points. So well coached. Got a double team in the post. Somebody's open, so she flashes to the top of the free throw line. 15-footer, catches it right there, and knocks it down. 
We are tied at 10 as we near one minute to play in the first. Holtz, double team for a moment there. Drives open. Can she finish? Yes. Six points for Maddie Holt. Cowell, one-handed runner off the glass. The shots are falling for everybody early on. But Cowell caught it, same play basically, on, but on the other side of the free throw line. I guess she didn't like that side because she's wide open for 15 foot again. I thought she was going to shoot it, but instead she goes, drives in, knocks down the little left-handed layup. Bergman back with it. They're shooting 50% in the opening quarter, five of 10 from the floor. And they're going to hold for this final shot. 10 seconds remaining, looking to take the lead. Ball into the hands of Hodges, around her defender, too hard. Rebound Taylor, two seconds. Taylor launches, <laughs> cannot hit. What a first quarter here at Bank OZK Arena. 12 all, you are watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Farmers and Merchants Bank and the Bank of Fayetteville share the mission of Arkansas PBS to enrich and empower all Arkansans. Community, dignity, respect, that's what me banking is all about. More at mebanking.com. It's now a session. action photos for the game at myarpbs.org slash photos. Grab a free download at Prince Made. These are great championship keepsakes. Abigail Hodges playing well for Bergman. Missed one of her baskets earlier. She has three points. Holt has four. We're tied at 12 as we start the second. And on the other side for Lamar, Carly Williams has six. Cowell has four. Bergman back with it. This time it is Holt. Off the glass and in. Now she has six. Bergman's having a lot of success of driving to the hole. Lamar's going to have to do a better job of help defense. They're getting beat, but they need their teammates to help them out, help them out, stop that drive. Don't let that penetration get all the way to the basket. Sanders into the lane, kicks to Cochran in the corner, buries the three. There you go. That first one falls. Watch out. And they've been setting up that play. How many times has Cochran already had the ball down on the baseline? They've been waiting for her to get open for that shot. Well, and I love Sanders has gotten off to a slow start shooting the ball. That time she drove in, penetrated, and got her teammate wide open. Right inside again. This is Maddie Holt scoring yet again right at the rim. That time she was posting up. Holt kind of a semi-quiet quarter with only four, but she scored the first four in this quarter. You see Ruby Trammell in the game for Bergman now as well. Hodges oh, picked up by Sanders. And Coach Schul Schulsterman told us that, you know, talk a lot about the offense of Sanders, but she's got great defense ability as well as a freshman. Holt fouled. Holt's made up her mind what she's going to do. She's going to catch it. She's going to go to the goal. She does not think they can stop her from getting to the basket. So far, she's right. They were trying to force her to the left, so she went to the left. Holt, an 87% free throw shooter. They put the foul on Carly Williams, her first. There you see Coach Schulterman for Lamar. He's signaling in the play for Corey. Corey gave her a little nod, gave him a little nod. He's pointing like to if he had a watch on, like, it's time. Maybe he was telling him it's time for you to go. 
See what they do here down by three inside to Sanders. She'll work it back out. Great little screen for her to catch the ball in the low post, but she did not have good position. Draw some contact and we have a whistle. Might be the best thing that can happen for her. Get to the free throw line, make a couple of free throw line, free throws, see that ball go through the hoop. It's a good feeling as a shooter once you make a couple, and it just helps you relax a little bit. Just rushing it a little bit. She's, look, it's the state championship game. She's a freshman. I know she's a great freshman, and she's going to have a, a, a great career in front of her, but she's never experienced this. Kara Ponder back in the game for Bergman, and there's the first point for Corey Sanders. That was much better. Took a time, just a hair, a little bit, fraction longer. Game speeds up in a moment like this. And you want to go a little faster, too. You just The great ones just know how to slow everything down. Slow, don't get caught up in the moment. She'll get into it, and she'll be uh, just fine. Good loud crowd here on hand as well. Ponder will drive all the way past her defender. And she's going to head to the line for two now as well. Once again, Bergman beats them to the basket. They're just making a living right now off free throws and layups. Up and in for Ponder, her first point. Say Taylor called for the foul, her first. Bergman making their free throws. Five of six in the game. Williams had the hot hand in the first. On a bit quiet here, and now a three offline and out of bounds. Hey, she rushed that too. I'm she caught it and just shot it, but she got a great screen. She had a little time to set up, but she just rushed it. Holt looking to work on Williams. Hey, get on. Hodges, they have Edwards up high. She hit the game's first basket, a three. Willis, and we've got a illegal screen. Is that what it was? Yes, an illegal screen. They're going to call that one on uh, Abby Hodges. Hodges gave one screen, and then she it caused her to be a little late for the second screen. It just happened to be an official standing right there and saw it. So the pace of the game has slowed down a little bit from our quick start when the first three shots went in. Taylor, 15-footer, almost had it. Rebound by Kara Ponder. Bergman back the other way. Just able to work it up top to Holt. Willis look inside. Edwards basket good. Or excuse me, Willis. No, yeah, Edwards. Edwards with five. She's right there at the rim. She's got great position inside. And you got to give her teammates credit for looking for her. Sometimes as a post player, you can have good position and you, you got the defender where you want them, but your teammates don't see you, and so it goes for naught. This time her teammates see her. Look, she's. Almost at the circle when she catches the ball, and she's got a huge size advantage. So all she has to do is catch it, keep the ball up high, and flip it in. Six foot one for Carson Edwards, and now has five points. 57% shooting for Bergman. And meanwhile, for the Lamar Lady Warriors, 32%. They've not had a field goal in the last 254. Now, you know, in college, that sounds like a huge amount of time. But high school, that's really only a couple of possessions sometimes. But still, you don't want to go three minutes without scoring. I look at some of these numbers, the averages for Bergman. I I'm surprised Edwards only averages eight points. You, you can tell with that size advantage, she's uh, very fluid, good on her feet, knows how to post up. And then she can shoot from the outside. She knocked down a three. But you got to remember, Bergman is 42-0. How many times have they blown out a team and Edwards has been on the bench in the fourth quarter? How many minutes per game is she playing? I bet not as much as some other players around the state. And that's probably why the numbers are lower on the averages for some of these the girls that play for Bergman. And, and Lamar, too. I yeah. mean, they've only lost a couple of games. So, And one of their losses to this Bergman team. Williams, maybe blocked there by Edwards. Help! Not the same shot we saw Williams taking in the first quarter. Four minutes to play until halftime. A spin move by Holt, 
Able to get her own offensive rebound, patient with it, high off the glass, and in, she has 12. We have a little bit of a size advantage. You get that rebound, you don't panic, you don't just throw it up there. You take your time, you know you can shoot over them. That's exactly what she did. Knocked away, Edwards, that height advantage there. And it will stay with Bergman when we come back. Bergman 24, Lamar 16, 340 to go until halftime. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Join us this summer for Blueberry's Clubhouse. We'll see a whole new crop of friends for the very best adventures in Arkansas. That's phenomenal! Good work, friends! We did it! Blueberry's Clubhouse returns this summer, only on Arkansas PBS. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. At Big Red Stores, we're always proud to sponsor, support, and partner up with many events and activities throughout the community. Among them, high school championships throughout the state of Arkansas. At Big Red Stores, our team members are always ready to assist you to make your visit with us a pleasant one. And at Big Red Stores, we recognize that none of our support or ability to serve the community is possible without you. That's why, at Big Red Stores, you're always the MVP of the Big Red team. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. We on that next level. We on that next level. Coming up at the half, the Arkansas PBS team shows you Ozark artistry at its finest. Amazing scenery from above Arkansas and inspiring stories from Arkansas's largest industry, agriculture. Stay with us for the Arkansas PBS halftime show sponsored by the Electric Cooperatives of America, or of, of Arkansas. Arkansas is America. That's right. The natural state, absolutely. 16-6 in the paint. Bergman has outscored Lamar, and that's because of the way Matty Holt has been able to just drive to the basket. Edwards got one close. Let's see if they go back to the paint here as well. Lamar just struggling from the outside now. One for nine from the three-point line. Got to knock down some shots. I just couldn't get around her defender. A three. That one's off to the right. And out of bounds. It'll be Bergman basketball. Or excuse me, Lamar basketball. Yeah, Lamar's getting some good open looks from the outside. And look, Bergman's a bigger team, and so it's tough to go inside sometimes. When they're able to get to the basket, the sh shots are being altered. You don't want to be just a jump sh shooting team, but they've got some capable shooters. A lob inside, out of bounds. Uh, spilling to the hardwood was Cowell. Ball is going to stay with Lamar. Tessa Willis checks out for Bergman. And back in is Ruby Trammell. Open! Open! Lamar still needs to get Corey Sanders going on offense. She's done a good job of facilitating the basketball. They need her to score. Look inside, taken away by Hodges. She read that one perfectly. Keeps the dribble. Tries to work on Sanders. We've got contact. This was saying on the floor there as Hodges was fouled. Maybe Sanders again. It could be her second foul. It is. Coach has got a decision now. That's two personal fouls. Got 2.29 to go in the half. He's going to leave her in there. I think you have to, honestly. I think so, down like this. Just enough space for Carson Edwards, and she hits again from long range. Her second three of the game, she opened up the scoring with a three, knocks down another three to give them a double-digit lead, largest lead of the game. 27-16, Cochran falls down. It's picked up by the Lady Panthers, Hodges. Extra pass up top, Ponder. Missed it short, offensive rebound by Edwards. Everything going the way of the Bergman Lady Panthers right now. Undefeated season to this point. Double digit lead looking to add to it. Boy, Holt really wanted it. She had some post position and Edwards didn't feel comfortable throwing it in. 
A look back to Coach Olitska for the play as they start back over. 90 seconds to go until halftime. Inside, hard pass off of the hands of Trammell and recovered by Lamar. Williams, nobody guarding her, pulls up from the free throw line and connects. Big, they needed that. They need to stop here and try to get another basket before the half. Get a little momentum going into halftime. It started to get away from them, but you get a chance to get a stop here. Holt spins and in. How do you stop that? Got to have help from your teammates. Sanders just met by one defender after another. Now Cochran down on the low block. She goes up with a half hook. Sanders comes over to get the rebound. 30 seconds to play until halftime. Williams driving on Edwards. Pumps block shot by Edwards. Put back up and in for Taylor. Great hustle from Taylor. 10 seconds until halftime. Single digit game right now. Berkman 29, Lamar 20. Matty Holt with 14 points. Edwards sets the screen. Holt the three. Good the buzzer. 17 first half points for Matty Holt. They have all the momentum going into halftime. Holt runs off screaming at the top of her lungs. Got the screen. Didn't get the help from the defender. So she just pulls up and nails it, knocks it down. Talk about a momentum changer right there. Lamar got a big rebound, offensive rebound, and put it in, and then they respond. Bergman responds with a three right there, 32-20 at the half. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. I tell people all the time that, that vaccines, in my opinion, are the miracle of modern medicine. There have been devastating diseases that have been virtually eradicated because of vaccines. You know, polio, smallpox, things like that. This one's the same way. It's a great thing. It prevents, in most cases, you from getting COVID. And even if you get it, your chances of being really sick are much, much less, much, much less likelihood to go to the hospital, much, much, much less likelihood that you die. So I think it's a great thing, great thing. It's natural to be concerned with our kids' safety, but when they're riding the school bus, we shouldn't have to be. Illegally passing a school bus puts our children's lives at risk. That's why Everett is joining area schools to promote the Flashing Red Kids Ahead Safety Program. School bus safety is everyone's responsibility. Do your part. Always stop when you see the flashing red lights of a school bus. Children's lives depend on it. Remember, Flashing Red, Kids Ahead. A big time play from Matty Holt, the leading scorer for Bergman, hitting a three at the halftime buzzer to give the Lady Panthers a 32-20 lead against Lamar at halftime. Michael Westbrook along with Wes Moore. And right now, 57% shooting for Bergman. That is a formula to win basketball games. Holt came into the game averaging about 19 points a game. She's got 17 at the half. Just very impressive the way she can put it on the, on the floor, get to the basket. Then she can shoot it from the outside, as you just saw from that three-pointer. And I got to tell you, too, Edwards has been very impressive. She's got size, but she can shoot the three. She knows how to post up. That has been a great one-two punch for Bergman. Lamar's just going to have to knock down some shots. They're 8 of 25 from the field. That's 32%. One for nine from behind the arc, 11%. They got to hit some shots in the second half to get back into this game. At halftime, Bergman 32, Lamar 20. It's the halftime break from Bank OZK Arena. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Hey everyone, welcome inside our studios here for the Arkansas PBS Halftime Show, sponsored by 
the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. I'm Ed Leon. And I'm Julie Thomas. And for the next few minutes, we're going to show you just some of the amazing programming we've produced to shine a light on the natural state. In addition to our high school sports programming, which now includes not only basketball and football, but baseball and softball as well, we make it our mission to tell Arkansas stories, those unique stories no one else is telling. Like our Emmy award-winning documentary about a truly unique blacksmithing operation in the hills of Mountain View, here's a look at the Ozark artistry of Urban Forge. <laughs> Blacksmithing, you've got to know how to do it from start to finish. It took me a lot to learn what I learned, what I know, and I still learn. <laughs> you know, I, I get things that come along that like, gal, <laughs> how am I going to do that? Obviously not the easiest line of work in the world. Patience is definitely a virtue in blacksmithing. <laughs> we have artisan blacksmiths and coppersmiths and wood carvers and Finnish artisans who all interpret wonderful designs that we create for people all across the country. It's just got its own unique pattern. And no matter how hard you try, you can't get two pieces to look alike because it is all hand done. The only one I'm really interested in passing everything on to that, that I know is my son. Like when there's been techniques lost over the years, there's been knowledge lost and we may never get that back. We gotta teach the new guy, or this ain't gonna be around much longer. People out there that would be great at it, and I don't think many people know, you know, that this exists. But it's still, you know, in its own right, a beautiful form of art. Pieces of artwork that people will want to hand down to their children. We wanna design something that can be a vessel for memories forever. You know, Ed, the characters we met in that film, they're something else. They are. I got a chance to spend a lot of time with those guys, and they're the real deal. Their artistry is beautifully captured here in this show, in the cinematography, the story of their art form. It's a beautiful program, and it's always available. Urban Forge, just like all our content, is just a few clicks away on demand. You can find our programs wherever you like to watch, on the PBS video app, on our website, or on our YouTube channel. YouTube TV subscribers can find us there too, and of course, the way you're watching us right now. Yeah, it is so awesome. There are so many platforms, so many Arkansas stories. You know, our own Chuck Dovish has been exploring Arkansas for decades, but this past year, he gave us an all new perspective of the natural state, one from the skies. Take a look at the gorgeous Exploring Arkansas from Above. Arkansas, the natural state, does indeed have many natural wonders, beauty that can especially be appreciated from a bird's eye view. This is our exploration of a unique state with an aerial cinematic perspective covering all four seasons. In Arkansas, You've got the delta, the mountains, rivers, from above, had so much to it. So many people are surprised at what we have here. It's just as beautiful as any other state. Welcome to Exploring Arkansas from Above. I love this so much, and you've never seen Arkansas like this. It's one of the most beautiful shows we've ever done, and the most unique view of our great state. Right, Julie. You know, we're Arkansas's public media. We get to dig a little deeper, tell a little bit more of the story. That's the nature of public broadcasting, and we're honored to do it, especially with a program like that one. Indeed we are, but you know, we're in a partnership. We're in a partnership with you, our viewer. We can't do this without your help. We'd love for you to be part of our family. Sign up to get exclusive sneak peeks and information sitting right to your inbox. Yes, add your voice to the conversation. Let's go over to Marge Bentley with the Arkansas PBS Foundation. She's gonna tell you how to do just that. All right, thanks Ed. I know we are short on time, so real quick, all we're asking is that you take a moment and go to our website, myarpbs.org slash sign up. Give us your email address and join the conversation. And if you love what you're watching, 
text sports to 501-491-0444 and donate $10 to help us bring you many, many more Arkansas stories. Now, Ed and Julie, I know our time is almost up, but maybe we can show one more clip. One more for you, Marge. Arkansas is one of the most productive and diverse agricultural states in the nation. And with that in mind, last spring we partnered with Arkansas Farm Bureau to explore rural community life, agribusiness, and much more. Here is a taste of Good Roots. There's well over 2,000 Arkansas rice farms. 96% of them are family owned and operated. It's all about building community. The results we've been seeing have been very promising. I grew up watching the farm, knowing every detail about it. If you take care of the soil, the soil will take care of you. It helps us to give back to the land and make sure that it's going to be there for future generations. Every community has a story to tell, and if somebody will tell it, it'll be interesting. Look for Good Roots the second Friday of each month during Arkansas Week and On Demand. Hey, it's about that time. Thanks for joining us for halftime. Let's get you back to Bank OZK Arena for more championship action on your home for the Arkansas Basketball State Finals, Arkansas PBS. Enjoy the second half. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. 32 to 20, Bergman leading Lamar in the 3A girls state title game from Bank OZK Arena. An incredible first half from Maddie Holt, 17 points. Joined by Edwards, who had eight, Michael Westbrook along with Westmore. 57% shooting for Bergman. It's going to be tough to beat a team when you're doing that. And then it's the star that hasn't just quite got going yet for Lamar. Sanders has only one point. She has not made a shot from the floor. They're going to get back into this game. It's going to start on the defensive end. They gave up 20 second quarter points. And that's been the difference in this game to me. Bergman plays great team defense whenever Lamar has been able to to beat their defender off the dribble. There's been somebody there to help out. On the other side, when Bergman's beating someone off the dribble, they've been able to go all the way to the basket. They got to get some better help defense uh, from Lamar. It's one possession at a time. They just to get back into this game. I feel like if they make some shots from the outside, that's going to lift their spirits. Uh, they just seemed a little frustrated there in that second quarter when they got outscored by 12. Bergman will start with the basketball as we are ready to get the third quarter started. Hey, let's go! So on the floor for Bergman, you've got Willis, of course, Maddie Holt, Kara Ponder, Abby Hodges, and Carson Edwards. Hodges misses the first shot. Lamar back the other way. We have Cochran, Cal, Taylor, Williams, and Sanders. They played only six players in this game. They go to Williams, who had a strong first half with eight points to lead her team. Bergman's second possession of this third. A little hesitation there from Holt. Didn't want to take a shot too early. Now they'll get a little more movement up top, Ponder. Still looking inside, nothing there. And back up top to Holt with Williams guarding. Work it over to the right side, Ponder. Edwards open, fires, missed it. And it is Cochran and Sanders who collide for the rebound for Lamar. Lamar's playing off of the ball a little bit more, giving them a little bit more space, almost daring them to shoot from the outside. They realized they were able to get to the basket so many times in that first half that they don't want to get beat off the dribble again. Edwards clogging up the paint. Lamar has it back. Sanders setting a screen. Cochran sends it to her. Now Williams. Edwards right there. No foul. Play on. Bergman has it. Holt on the run. Maddie Holt steps through. Blocking foul the call. 
great body control. I mean, it looked like uh, Lamar was going to set up, try to take the charge. And she just stepped, like you said, stepped through it, avoided the contact. Not a whole lot of contact there. Maybe looked like she almost was anticipating the, the contact and the charge and fell back. Maybe if she doesn't even fall, they don't even call anything. You said it at halftime, Maddie Holt averaging almost 19 a game. That's 19 right there. we got a long way to go. Her team's up by 14. Taylor outside. Cal wide open. Knocks it down. That's that Bergman help defense. Got beat off the dribble, but they had somebody there to help and stop the dribble drive penetration. Well, when you see that, kick it out, wide open three. Problem is they haven't been knocking down that three. Cutter in the lane, yeah, Ponder with the basket. If you're Lamar, you gotta speed it up a little bit here, don't you? That was a quick possession last time, they got the three. Don't have to panic yet. Cochran, step back. That was a little bit rushed. And tipped, will it go out of bounds? Nope, Holt picks it up. Holt on the drive, into the paint, slips, and out of bounds. Just lost it and fell down along the way. Just a little bit out of control and lost the handle of the ball. Good no call. Just would not go halfway down. Hodges back with it for Bergman. And a tangle up there. Lady Panthers come away with it. Coach says, hold on. Let's regroup from that. Now a step back three. Oh, would not go almost. And it's Williams with the rebound. At the free throw line, Williams over Edwards. Rebound by Kara Ponder. Bergman has it again. We're nearing four minutes to play in the third. Bergman 36 and Lamar 23. Bergman out rebounding Lamar 20 to 15. Still above 50% for the game from the floor for Bergman. Edwards, he's already hit two threes. That one, she's not happy with herself as it's an air ball out of bounds. She was looking at her hands like, what was I doing? What was, that didn't even go good off my hands. 36-23, Bergman with the lead on Lamar at the media timeout. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. and Merchants Bank and the Bank of Fayetteville share the mission of Arkansas PBS to enrich and empower all Arkansans. Community, dignity, respect. That's what me banking is all about. More at mebanking.com. How would you like a copy of today's game? Get a DVD so you can watch it over and over and over again. Go to mmproductions.net, mmproductions.net. Today's game any game that we've had at the state tournament so far. Bergman beat Lamar on December the 11th, 59 to 48. One of the two losses for the Lamar Lady Warriors this year. Their other being to Mayflower. This has been a really close 3A game, but lately a lot of Bergman, especially late in that second, and early here in the third, and they lead by 13. And Lamar is so close on the rim, the shots are just not going down. It was a great set play out of that timeout. Got a wide open 14-footer. Just rattled around the rim, couldn't get it to fall. Ponder leaves it underneath the Moon, and she traveled with it. Madeline Moon just checking into the game. Crazy how sometimes the ball finds 
find you as soon as you check in. What happened in the first right. half to her? They ran an out of bounds play, came right to her. And she needs a little time to warm up, you know, just got in the game and the ball's in my hands already. She's giving Edwards a break. Tough day for Sanders, 0 of 7 from the floor. Move the ball. Even if she gets around one defender, they are swarming to her. She's not getting any open looks. Williams finds the three point shooter. And Cowell cannot hit. Rebound by Ponder. Bergman has it. The shoe game is strong in this one. You know, you've got so many colors out there with the shoes. <laughs> we don't always see that. Up top, three-point game going strong as well for Kara Ponder, who now has eight. Kind of getting rewarded for that big defensive rebound. She gets and goes back down the court and gets the uh, three. Williams wide open and just missed it. Tapped around a bit. Ponder has another rebound and she's starting to put together really solid numbers. That's the difference in the game right there. You just saw Bergman knock down a wide open three. Lamar works it, gets a wide open three, and they don't make it. Sometimes basketball's pretty simple. The team that makes the most baskets, right, is the team that's going to win. Well, 9 of 35 for Lamar. They're 2 of 13 from the three-point line. On the other hand, 51%, 52% from the floor for Bergman. And they're 4 of 10, 40% from the three-point line. And you've got Holt with 19, Edwards with 8, Ponder with 7, and she also has 6 rebounds in 20 minutes of action today. Kara Ponder playing really well, senior. Ponder works it back over to Hodges. Less than two to go in the third, and Lady Panthers taking their time. Largest lead of the game, 16 points. Well, Moon had Ponder wide open. They get it to her a little late. She finishes anyway. Ponder did a great job. Nobody was guarding her, so she just flashes to the ball, makes herself available, puts her hands up, and they finally saw her and got it to her. One-handed runner in the lane, no good by Sanders. A quick rebound by Holt. Bergman back the other direction. Looking to push, maybe, and call a carry. Turnover there on Bergman. I'd say this slipping away from, from uh, Lamar. They need to get a stop. They got that stop, but they got to get some shots to fall. They're down 18 here at the end of the third quarter. They got to make a run. Williams inside, not there. Now out to Taylor, just outside the free throw line. That's good for Shay Taylor. She has four points. Lamar trying to do a little full court press. It's nice when you have big guards like that that can take care of the ball. Ponder, Maddie Holt. They can see over the defender. They can pass over the defender. It's such an advantage. A little collision there, no foul. Holt has it, and she will drive. And she's going to the free throw line. Tangled up with Carly Williams. Second foul on Williams. Well, Bergman scored at least 40 points in the first half of all three regional games. It's taken to the end of the third to get there. Even with a Morgan. commanding lead like this, it's a lower scoring game than what they played the last three games. Well, they've gotten very deliberate here in the third quarter. No need to rush it with the big lead. Holt, an 89% free throw shooter, knocks down a pair. Leads up to 18. She has a game high 21. Taylor colliding with uh, Ruby Trammell, and they'll call a blocking foul on Bergman. Just a fraction late. It's good help defense. She was trying to close her off. Just, yeah, it's still moving just a hair. Good call. Bergman looking for its first state championship in school history, and Lamar last won a title in 1991. And when you look at these two teams, two combined losses coming into the state championship, you might think they've got a long pedigree of success. Not the case, they're just having great years. One of the losses came from each other. Yeah. <laughs> just one team from out, you know, in the state has beaten these two teams. And that was Mayflower. And that's a, you know, a conference rival for uh, Lamar, a team that they play a lot. So they know each other well. 
Holt has it. We're down to 10 seconds. Third quarter coming to an end. Can they add to their lead? They hit a three at halftime. Holt takes it on the drive. Missed. Put back. Yes. They do it again. Look at the two benches. That sums it up. Bergman explodes off the bench. Lamar, no one even gets off the bench. 45-26 as we go to the fourth. A big lead for Bergman. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first, by empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charities, education, and exceptional service, because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind, Centennial Bank, member FDIC. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. At Big Red Stores, we're always proud to sponsor, support, and partner up with many events and activities throughout the community. Among them, high school championships throughout the state of Arkansas. At Big Red Stores, our team members are always ready to assist you to make your visit with us a pleasant one. And at Big Red Stores, we recognize that none of our support or ability to serve the community is possible without you. That's why, at Big Red Stores, you're always the MVP of the Big Red team. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. Up next, the Arkansas PBS postgame show with Steve Sullivan rock out with a Hot Springs Junior Academy band director. Relive the renaming of the University of Central Arkansas basketball court and meet the Arkansas PBS All-Stars for Divisions 3A and 4A. 45-26 as we start the fourth quarter from Bank OZK Arena in Hot Springs. Bergman has a commanding 19-point lead. Much of that today because of Matty Holt, who has 21 points. Bergman shooting 53% from the floor, 16 of 30. Meanwhile, 26% shooting for Lamar. I imagine we're going to see some long possessions here. Well, well maybe not. That. <laughs> you get a wide open three, I guess you might as well take it. Oh, an offensive rebound, almost diving and knocking over a chair at the end of the bleachers for the Lady Panthers is Kessa Willis. That's the hustle play there though that you know you're up big you just let that one go out of bounds no big deal. She wasn't content to let that happen. Sanders up high Cochran lets it fly. Another rebound for Ponder, and she's nearing a double-double. Nine points, nine boards in 23 minutes. Right inside to Edwards. Got it. And I think Edwards just got teed up. She turned around right after the basket, said something to the defender. Yep, you're right, it was. And right away, one of her teammates went over to her and talked to her and settled her down. Here's a good look at it. Oh, she got hit across the face. That's what made her mad. Yeah. The referee missed that. She got slapped across the, her face, and she was frustrated about that. There was a moment in the first quarter that kind of went unnoticed as well between Edwards and a defender. So coach will take her out. Sanders gets one free throw to go, so she has two points. She's got a smile on her face now. Cochran off of the screen, high off the glass. Ponder her 10th rebound. Nice pass across the court to Hodges, and they can slow down now. Walk. Yep. No. I think it's important that Lamar gets Corey Sanders going. And maybe not so for this game. You know, this one's pretty much out of hand, a 20-point game. It takes something crazy for them to come back. But for the future, I mean, she's right. a freshman. This is a young team, by the way, very young team. They've got a chance to be here next year, the next year. 
but you want to get that monkey off your back. You know, have a good experience to where you can build off of that so that the next time you, you're here, it's not like an, almost like a nightmare, something that you have to overcome. I'd like to see her have a good fourth quarter and it'd be something that can pay off for next year. Well, Bergman starting to run away with it, 49-27, and you're absolutely right. As a freshman, not going to be a good feeling for her when this one's over, 0 for 8, but she's got a long career ahead of her. Wide open, Trammell connects. Ruby Trammell finds her way into the state championship record books with her first three there. She's on the, in the books now. Not the record books, but in the books. And 52-27. That's a great thing you pointed out that Sanders is 0 for 8. She still hasn't even made a basket. Yeah. They need they need to make sure that is taken care of before this game is over. Taylor with six. Oh. I dribble there. Maybe some maybe it was knocked free. I don't know. Well, they're honestly letting a lot of stuff go right now. There's been a lot of contact. Yeah. It's a 20 point game now, 23 point game. It's they're letting a lot of stuff go. And there's your double-double for Ponder. I, you know, Wes, I'm sure they're looking probably, we still got five minutes left. Matty Holt likely the MVP, but I don't know. You, I'd have a discussion with Ponder in this one. 12 points, 10 rebounds in 25 minutes, four of seven from the floor. That's a, that's a good duo to have those two, regardless of what they end up going with. And it's a trio, because you throw in Edwards too, she's got a double-double with 10 rebounds yeah. and 10, 10 points. But. To me, Holt's the one that makes this team uh, move, and she's the straw in this drink, stirring it up. Uh, Holt's been awesome. 7 11 from the field, 6 of 6 from the free throw line. It is a, uh, hey, it's an impressive group from Bergman. There's a reason why they haven't lost this year. Yep. A timeout on the floor, and while we have a moment, you know, you see the student sections come to the games in their school colors, and we saw this huge group all wearing pink. I went over and talked to these young men and women a little bit earlier, and well, they're mourning the loss of one of their teachers, Amanda Harrison, who passed away just within the last couple of weeks, and her son Landon is in the crowd, and had a chance to visit with him for just a moment, and so they're honoring their teacher while they also come out and support their team, and that's great to see. Cal gets the first one to go, got the I think it hit every part of the rim before it finally went in. Coach wants some sweat wiped up on the court. Well, that's more than sweat, isn't it? I see it now. I see something awfully shiny right inside the circle. We have a, yeah, there it is. He's found uh -huh. it. Yeah, that's a lot. I wonder if something's dripping. Had a lot of snow on the roof melting off right now. We did. I mean, I see it all through the center circle now that I look. Could just be the glare, but. Get that cleaned up. I know this. I had to wait in the parking lot about 15 minutes last night to get the snow off of my truck. Just get out of here. <laughs> yeah, I kept reading reports of, you know, a couple of inches, you know, one, two inches. And I walk outside, there's like three or four inches on my car. And I think we got a ton in Hot Springs. Co Coach saw it again. There's definitely more spots inside that center circle. Now we're down. Yep, kind of a I pointing game. <laughs> We need one of those big, uh, like, grooves. Got uh, the, the, the flat yeah. in, yeah. The sweeper. The sweeper. I was trying to find a uh, fancy name for it. It's just a sweeper. Oh, well, if it's a fancy name, I wouldn't know. I'm not fancy. You hate to have this kind of delay here, though, and 449 to play in the fourth. Bergman controlling it, 55-31. Player safety, you got to make sure that the court is clear. There was a Hot Wheel on the court before the game started. They got rid of that at least. Baskets up and again in for Maddie Holt. Yet again, she now has 23. Yeah, nobody stopped the ball. So just kept going until they stop you. Well, if they're not going to stop me, I'll go shoot a layup. Williams works it back outside to Sanders. Thought about it. Williams, a double team rejected. Her teammate picks her up. That's Taylor with another basket. We hit the four minute mark of the fourth. Bergman 57, Lamar 33. 
Nice look inside. Uses that power dribble up and in for Kessa Willis. She has six. Bergman a couple of minutes away from finishing off an undefeated season in the 3A championship. There's the first basket of the game for Corey Sanders to go with a couple of free throws, and she has four. Came into the game averaging 14 a game. Willis taking it on the drive yet again, missed it. Rebound by Sanders. She passed it off to her teammate and told her to shoot it. Shoot it. Taylor did, just missed it. See if they work a little time off the clock. Been fast and furious for a few minutes. Oop, they're going to shoot it. Willis taking some shots. I think Coach telling her maybe don't take that one next time. She ran back down the floor. It's difficult because, you know what, you've been uh, sitting there on the bench and you get a chance to play. You want to shoot it. You practice hard, right? You want to get some shots up. You talked about your playing time. I did sit on the bench a lot. I was there. <laughs> I know about that. So when you got in, what did you want to do? Shoot. 59-35, Bergman, 244 away from the 3A state title championship. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. It's natural to be concerned with our kids' safety, but when they're riding the school bus, we shouldn't have to be. Illegally passing a school bus puts our children's lives at risk. That's why Everett is joining area schools to promote the Flashing Red Kids Ahead Safety Program. School bus safety is everyone's responsibility. Do your part. Always stop when you see the flashing red lights of a school bus. Children's lives depend on it. Remember, flashing red, kids ahead. Hands up, hands up, hands up, hands up, hands up. Let me see it, let me see it. Bounce, 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 bounce. We're wrapping up the 3A girls championship game. Coming up next, we got the 3A boys finals. It's Osceola and Dumas. Dumas 28-3 on the year. Osceola 27-4 should be an outstanding game. Wes, at halftime, Bergman was shooting 57% from the floor. We have 244 to go in the fourth, and they're shooting 56%. That's impressive. Good third quarter for them. Up 59 to 36. Bergman with the basketball. Inside three to play. You know, you look at Lamar offensively, they've only had three turnovers the whole game. They they're not, it's not like they're coming down and throwing the ball away, can't get shots off. They're running their offense, they're getting shots, they're just not making their shots. It has been a very clean played game. Coach is calling a timeout here just to get his starters out of the game. Four subs were set to check in, so they got to have the 30 second timeout, but it was mainly just to get his other players in here with 222. And so they'll have to leave one out there, but we'll see who they take out. Holt, 23 points, eight of 12 from the floor, six of six at the free throw line in 30 minutes. Ponder with 12, Edwards with 10, Hodges with five, Willis with six. Lamar back out on the court. So we've got Madeline Moon in the game. Braylon Collins, new point guard will be Madison Husky. Trammell is out there. We've seen her play a little bit today. And also, you have Taylor Cantwell underneath the moon. She's fouled. Uh, now Lamar is going to have a mass substitution. They've played pretty much the same five the, this entire game. And these five, well, they, many of them have a chance to be back next year because Lamar had one senior, and that was uh, Lauren Lax. And I think she may be checking in right now, number 12. I believe so. So the five that we've seen for most of this game will all be back next year. 
very likely fuel them to another state championship game. We'll get these subs in for Lamar. Josie Wilkins, Lauren Lax, Ashlyn Barnes, Madison Davidson, and Kirsten Carr. Those five take the floor for Lamar. He's huddled up with his girls right now talking, and I know what the message is he's sending. Great year, fantastic year, but we're going to be back. We're going to do this again. Let's learn from it. Remember this feeling right now. It's not a good feeling, but let that feeling drive you for next year. Two minutes to go in the 3A state championship game. Hard fall there. Feet got tied up. Cantwell called for the foul. So free throw opportunity for Ashlyn Barnes, sophomore. You look at the faces of Lamar on the bench, and it's more frustrating than Matt. You know, I was looking to, you know, to see just the, the feeling they are over there, and it's you don't see tears. You see, you know, they're disappointed, but they're, they're more than anything. I think they're mad because they know they're better than what they showed today, and I think we all realize that. They're a better team than what they showed today, shooting-wise. And a lot has to do with Bergman because Bergman's an outstanding team, and we've seen defensively Bergman's played very well. Yeah, only two losses all year for Lamar, as we've said. Paige Hillenberg just checked into the game for Bergman. We'll make sure you get her mentioned as well. And it's going to be Hillenberg taking the shot. Loose ball picked up by Lamar. And out of bounds. Back the other way to Bergman now. 55% shooting for Bergman. 22 of 40. And a long three. Goodness. Well, we've got five more players set to check in for Lamar. We'll see if they get in. Down to a minute 18 to play. That three misses. And a rebound by Bergman. Awfully quiet inside the arena right now. Maybe when you get down to about a minute, we might hear the Bergman crowd cheer. There is the anticipation. Just watching that clock tick down. They're ready to celebrate, lift that trophy in the air. Allison Jackson on the floor for Bergman and Kirsten Lowry as they had two check in, and there were five more check in for Lamar. Kelly Flores. Or let's see, excuse me, that was Kaylee Long. Riley Miller, long with it, less than a minute to go. Her shot won't go. Let's see who else we got out there. Kylie Flores is on the floor. She'll take the shot. Braley Vanover, offensive rebound, and Shaden Danver in the game. Danver, a three. It might be the last shot for Lamar. She'll remember that forever. Might get another look at it. Well, we're all having fun now. Collins hits the three. And and one more in. One more. Madison Husky. That's a good replay at that three-point shot. I think she'll uh, save that for a while. I think so. Underneath the Vanover, off the glass and in. And we're down to 10 seconds. Bergman 64, Lamar 42. See if there's one more shot. There will be off the glass and in. The basket is good for Allison Jackson, and that will do it. The Bergman Lady Panthers complete their undefeated season, and they win the 3A Girls State Championship 66 to 42 over Lamar. When we come back, player interview and coach interview as well. We'll talk to the MVP and the winning coach. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. This month on Arkansas PBS. Meandering through the southern half of Arkansas, Bayou Bartholomew holds the distinction of being the longest bayou in the world. 
consumer DNA testing used by millions, but the results can be life-changing. From outwitting rattlesnakes to aerial feats, cast of cheeky characters will reveal the secret to Squirrel's success. Only on Arkansas PBS. No, no. 66 to 42, the final score. Bergman beats Lamar, and they are presenting the runner up trophy to Lamar. A fantastic season. Wes mentioned it. Some disappointed faces, obviously. A team that's just not used to losing. But what a fantastic year. So many of these players coming back. We expect to see them here again. And they're just moments away from presenting that state championship trophy to the Bergman Lady Panthers and coach James, Halit James Halitska, who will be over here with us in just a moment. And also the announcement of the MVP is coming as well here in just a second. Kind of think it's Maddie Holt, and uh, well, she'll be joining us here in a few minutes, just outstanding all throughout the year. 18.7 points per game, 89% free throw shooter, 47% behind the three-point line, and I mean, she was, she was awesome today, 23 points, 8 of 12 from the field, 1 of 2 from behind the three-point line, 6 of 6 from the free throw line. I don't know how much more you could ask from her, 23 points, 3 rebounds, she had an assist. She is uh, the leader of the team, and she got it done today. And she had 17 at halftime, and you said it. The, the year they've had, she's not been needed to score much in the fourth quarter probably. So she still had a really strong second half, but they didn't have to even rely on her or else she probably would have had 30. And there she is. She's just been handed the MVP trophy. Maddie Holt will be coming over this way in just a moment. Eight of 12 from the floor and made all six of her free throws as well. 23 points in 30 minutes of action. And Lamar's already received their runner-up trophy and they've went into the uh, locker room, but that's a... Uh, that's a group that you got to remember with uh, Corey Sanders, Shea Taylor, Morgan Cochran, Bailey Cow, Carly Williams, many of those we're going to see maybe here again next year. They were three-fourths of the way to us, but had to go back and pose for a couple more pictures. What more? <laughs> Coach Halitska is going to join us first. Here he comes, James Halitska. Coach. Congratulations, Appreciate you it. get it done, a perfect season. I know a lot of pressure. How does it feel now? Uh, it feels great and it's over. Uh, this group's handled that pressure a lot. They they were our first undefeated junior high team in school history. And then last year they were on a 30-something game win streak before they lost in the Final Four. And then this year they played a lot during the summer, went undefeated summer. and. You don't want to be undefeated coming in about January, but it was what it was, so they had to handle that pressure, and they did it well. How motivated were they because of what happened last year? They were year? very motivated. They, last year, they, people thought that they lost because they didn't play a tough enough schedule, but sometimes you just don't play a good game, and they were ready to prove people wrong on that this year, and they did that. I know we have to talk about Maddie Holt, but let's talk about some other players first. She started the game with a three from Edwards. Yep. She really set the tone, I thought, you know, hitting down a couple of threes, yeah, actually. Yeah, she had two out of three to start. Yeah, but then really after that, it was so much of the dribble drive, getting Holt in the paint, getting Edwards in the paint, getting Hodges in the paint, outscored him in the paint today 34-14. to 14. That was the difference. That was a big one. We're known for shooting a lot of threes. Last year we broke the record for most threes in the season, and we rebroke it this year. But I told them our goal today was relentless to the rim. Get to the rim, get to the post. Um, they did a really good job with that today, and from, from many different spots, too. I was impressed with your defense, Coach, because uh, there were times that they were able to get by one defender, but then you had the help defense. The help yeah. defense was outstanding. This group's done well all year on not getting people around our hip uh, from many different spots. So they do a good job cutting off that initial drive and helping when they need to afterwards. What's Maddie Holt meant to this team? Uh, she had a big season. She had... She had probably one of the best statistical seasons you could ever ask for. I think her for the season was over 47 from three, over 70 from two, and 90 from free throw. Uh, you don't get that very often. When she misses, you're like, what's going on? Yeah, she broke the most consecutive free throws in a game, game play record. She broke it last year. She broke her own record twice this year at 40 and 43. 
Uh, so she's nice to have on the line at the end. Last one for you, what's this mean for Bergman? Oh, huge. It's been 69 years since we won a state championship, 17 since the girls have been in the finals. Uh, it meant a lot to the whole town. They were here. It was loud. Coach, uh, congratulations. Appreciate it. We'll get Maddie Holt over here in just a few minutes. Uh, she's finishing up with some radio duties right now, but uh, 69 years. That's a special group. You know, when you're able to do something that hasn't been done in 69 years, that town will never forget them. They'll be, uh, you know, honored. There, there'll be that state championship banner in the uh, gym with their name on it. It's something that the, now they're part of history in Bergman. And you really also love to see a player who's expected to play well also play well in a state championship game. That doesn't always happen. Bring that with you. You need the trophy with you. Yeah. <laughs> you got to show that off. Matty Holt joining us now, the state tournament MVP. Great game today. Uh, your emotions right now of getting it done, a, a perfect season and winning a state championship. I don't even know what to feel right now. I just, our seniors are going to be gone next year, and that's all I'm really just feeling right now. I know we just won a state championship, but I know that this is probably never going to happen again because I have the best teammates, and they just helped me along the way, and I couldn't have done it without all the seniors. Coach told us you had the long winning streak last year. You lose in the Final Four. Long winning streak this year. How much pressure was on you and your team to get this done today? There was no pressure. I knew that we had it. We knew that we had it. We have all the confidence in the world in ourselves, and that's that's why we got this done today. That loss in the semifinals last year, how did it fuel you for this year? It lit a fire under us for sure. We, we were devastated last year. I feel like we felt a lot of pressure last year from everyone, and this year we we didn't feel any pressure, and I feel like that's why we won it is because we had all the confidence in ourselves that we could win. This is a three-point shooting team, but y'all were able to really dominate in the paint today. How Talk about that strategy a little bit, able to get to the rim. All the teams that, like, around us in our conference and everything, they know that we can bust some threes and – we knew that today our coach was talking to us earlier before the game that we were going to have to get to the paint if we wanted to win this game. And that's what we did, and that's how we won this game is getting to the paint. You're a junior. You lose a lot of seniors off of this team, a lot of your good friends. But what's the goal next year now? Win a state championship again. It's going to be harder, but I have full faith in my team, and I know that we can do it. We may be young, but I know that we can do it if we try. Congratulations. Thank you. Great Thank job. You. Fun watching your play. Maddie Holt joining us. Yeah, you think about that, the whole starting lineup is gone except for her, and she will have a lot of pressure on her next year to be that leader and to lead them back. Let's look over some of those final numbers. We talked all about it throughout the game, the way Bergman shot the basketball, just shy of 56% for the entire game, 24 of 43. And meanwhile, on the other side for Bergman at 28.8%, 15 of 52. And again, leading scorer, Shea Taylor had 10 for Lamar nine for Bailey Cowell and eight from Carly Williams to lead Lamar to a solid season that ends at 30 and three. And for Bergman, 23 points from Maddie Holt, 12 points from Kara Ponder and 10 from Carson Edwards for their undefeated season, Wes. Just a fantastic way of finishing things off. 66-42, you win by 24. Very impressive. I tell you what, this Bergman team, they've been ranked number one most of the year. They're ranked number six overall in the state. When you have a 3A team that's ranked number six in the state overall, you know they're good. And today, they proved that ranking is right. we got the 3A boys game to come. Dumas and Osceola, that's going to be a good one as well. Can't wait to see Dumas. I've heard a lot about them. They were ranked number one in the state for much of the year. They had a late loss, and then Osceola took over the number one rating. So I think two, the two best teams in 3A are here, and we're going to find out which one is the best and deserves that number one ranking. Our final score here in this one, it was 66 to 30, Bergman with the victory over Lamar. Excuse me, 66 to 42, the final score. For Westmore, I'm Michael Westbrook. Thanks for watching. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports.